Earlier, we sat down with Tennessee Senator Bob Corker. He's head of the Foreign Relations Committee and also happens to be one of the president's toughest critics in the Republican Party. You're leaving the Senate and you've been pretty candid in your past uh, about what you thought of where the president was. You questioned his stability, you questioned his competence. Do you have a reason now that you're being more careful in your language? Have you fixed your relationship with the president? Well, look, you know, I, I don't think people realize that we never stop talking. And when you say be more careful, I'm, I'm uh, again, I'm assessing things as they are. And as I just mentioned, uh, there has been a lot of progress made. Sometimes it's, it's a little un uncanny as to how it happens, and it's very unorthodox. And the president, uh, you know, just uh, like a lot of business people, just picks up the phone and sometimes things happen uh, in a good way, sometimes not. But uh, you know, we've made some, we have made progress in North Korea, there's no question. You think progress is a meeting? Well, I'm, I'm really talking about the things we've done to bring the international community together to, uh, to put us in a place where discussions can take uh, place. Um, the Iran deal will be another issue that's coming up in May, and right now it doesn't feel like it's going to be extended. I think the president likely uh, will move away from it unless my, our European counterparts really come together on a framework, um, and it doesn't feel to me that they are. Now, as we get uh, within two weeks of the May 12th date, that could change. You think but the president's going to pull out of that Iran deal on May 12th? <clears throat> I do. I do. Now you have this timeline in May where you could see the U.S. pulling out of a nuclear deal with Iran at the same time it's starting to negotiate with North Korea about its nuclear program. Do you think it makes things harder to get anywhere with North Korea? I don't. I mean, I know people... You don't think they're related? I don't. I, look, I, I have used that argument, okay? But at the end of the day, I, I think this, uh, this whole situation with North Korea Korea and the way that uh, it's shaping up right now, is, as I mentioned, is somewhat unorthodox. And I think you're dealing with a, a leader there that probably doesn't think the same way that other countries and their leadership might. So uh, I'm not sure that it's going to end up having a detrimental effect. Do you think the president should sit down with Kim Jong-un? Um, I think it's fine. It, look, it's going to happen. You I do believe that, that meeting's going to happen? I, I think ultimately it happens. I do. You've already seen the you've seen the administration sort of move away from an instant meeting. They've uh, said that you know well, they don't know exactly when it's going to occur. And so I think maybe not May, which is when the well. I think you're seeing that happen because the realities of what you have to do in preparation to make sure that it's successful. Um, it takes a while for that to occur. We do have back channels ourselves, by the way. Um, uh, to North Korea, and uh, you know we have our ways of uh, of setting things like that up in an appropriate manner. And do you think Mike Pompeo is currently at the CIA, but will ultimately face confirmation ahead of your committee to become Secretary of State? Is he the right person to be leading that diplomacy? I mean, is he already laying some of this groundwork? I think he became aware of his situation uh, over the weekend, and you saw where he had already briefed himself up on North Korea a little bit more fully than he otherwise would have, probably. It's my sense that Pompeo is much more aligned with the president, and so I think one of the questions he'll get uh, you know, during the hearing process is just ensuring that uh, he's going to be giving honest assessments um, and that full range of options to the president as decisions are being made. My sense is, though, they will get along. Um, they will move much more fully together as they move down the path on foreign policy. Do you expect to have a new Secretary of State by May? Uh, look, it's uh, Margaret, as you know, we're moving into the sort of the election season and things are beginning to feel slightly uh, more partisan. I hope that's the case, but we'll see. Rand Paul says he's going to block the nomination. Well, we have 21 members, um, and so it takes 11, and we have one member who said they would oppose them. There were two Democrats who voted for Pompeo on the floor as who are members of the committee uh, for CIA. Have you spoken with Rex Tillerson since he was fired? I had a long conversation with him, yes. How is he doing? I think he's doing fine. I think he, he feels he knows he's laid the groundwork for North Korea. I know he... He, uh, he feels like he's moved things along in a good way. He wants to have a very 
a good transition with Pompeo. He's a class act in that regard. So I think he's at peace. I think uh, he obviously wanted to stay a year. He moved beyond that. Um, I think he was planning to be here this entire, this entire year also to make it two. Um, but uh, look, I, I think he, he feels like he served his country well and, and uh, knows that uh, uh, the president needs to have his own secretary of state or one, one that he more jihals fully with. And you can see our full interview with Senator Corker on our website at facethenation.com. We'll be right back.